It's funny, I didn't think a lot about gnomes before the movie was made. And now I know more about gnomes than I ever even thought I would. Um, and so when you make these movies and people and friends find out you're doing a movie about gnomes, I have actually developed quite a collection of gnomes of my own. So I'm probably going to have one corner of my back garden that I will devote to Gnomeo and Juliet. Um, and there it will stay until my uh, future wife says, Let's get rid of those gnomes, but I don't think she will because she likes them too. So, is there um, is there kind of a, like a, a favorite character design you have as well out of all of them? Well, you know, I like all the characters. I have a certain fondness in my heart for Featherstone because you know the the plastic pink flamingo is sort of an American icon that came up through the fifties. It sort of symbolizes kitsch and tackiness in a lot of ways, but it's actually turned into sort of now it's transferred into sort of a pop art. Um, phenomenon. So I, I'm very proud of, of Featherstone in the movie. And he, a little piece of trivia, Featherstone is named after the actual man, Don Featherstone, who originally sculpted the original plastic pink flamingo. And he's designed after it exactly to that of sculpture. So we're paying tribute to someone with that character. And, and Don Featherstone, I got to meet him. Uh, he always wears pink. He's a great guy. And uh, he's very, very pleased. He's 75 years old. He did that sculpture 57 years ago. And uh, now today we have it in a movie. So think about how he feels. You've got kind of, um, well, it's quite an interesting film in that you, it's like, it's a classic tale, we all know. But then you've got the Elton John music and stuff. And yeah. Is that, that kind of a, say, more of an attraction than if you were asked to do a conventional Romeo and Juliet animated? Well, it certainly helped interest me. I mean, I think that we, we told the story as best we could uh, in and of itself. We told the story of Romeo and Juliet with Garden Gnomes. Uh, I think the music helped kind of glue everything together emotionally and gave us sort of a consistency, um, sort of the way the music in The Graduate by Simon and Garfunkel sort of glues the emotional cues together. I, I think we did that with this film and certainly James Newton Howard and Chris Bacon came in and they used a lot of Elton melodies folded into their score which also helped that. So um, because Elton's English and because the Bard himself was English and this story sort of springs from Stratford-on-Avon which is the very soil these gnomes work and grow in, uh, it's grounded very much in English culture. So Elton and Bernie, both being English, it was kind of a perfect melding. Mm -hmm. Now I'm from Texas, so that's really the most incongruous thing about the whole thing, but somehow I fit in, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I, I learned a lot more than anybody else on this movie. And what's, kind of, what's Elton like as a boss and, and David Furnish as well, because they were producers on Well, this. they were, uh, Elton was executive producer and David Furnish and Steve Hamilton Shaw and Baker Bloodworth were the producers that were a little more working with me on a daily basis. Uh, Elton though, you know, they're not bosses, they're partners. Uh, Elton never treated me like a subservient at all. He treated me um, with great respect and mutual respect and it was a really wonderful experience working with him. I've been a huge fan of his all my life, so I was initially a little bit starstruck, I'll admit, mm -hmm. but now uh, Elton and I are friends, and uh, it's one of the most, it's probably the most gratifying thing that's ever happened to me in my career, mm -hmm. is to become friends with someone that I idolize. I mean, what, you know, that's fantastic. Yeah, do you have a favorite Elton track, and one that you kind of were glad that you got in there as well? Uh, my favorite Elton song is your song, and we did find just the right romantic moment to fold in that melody a little bit. And, and we also used it in a very comic way as possible. And I think, uh, I think that's, uh, that's probably my favorite song and one of my favorite moments in the movie.